Hello friends, it's uh, the World Cricket Chat yet again. Uh, Shruti and I are back for the third game of this dry series between Australia, South Africa and West Indies with Australia taking on South Africa in this third match. Hi Shruti, all set with today's prediction? Hi Sunir, I am ready indeed. But as always, before we even begin with me, let's get started with how you're seeing Australia after they coasted through the game against the Windies. Well, Australia won their opener against West Indies with a bonus point to boot uh, for finishing the match off within 40 overs. And while they looked uh, rusty on occasions, having not played ODI cricket for a long time, they tried hard to stick to their basics. Uh, Mitchell Stark was one of the prime examples of this as he made his return to international cricket after being uh, out of the game for six months because, because of an injury. He tried hard to bowl to his plan of keeping it full and getting it to swing and move in the air. And uh, while he sent on five wides and a no ball as a result of that rustiness that I was speaking about, he also grabbed the two wickets. Uh, I think Nathan Lyon and Adam Zampa picked up uh, six for 55 of nearly 16 overs between them and shut off uh, any chances that West Indies might have entertained after having reached uh, 50 for one in 11 overs at one stage to wrap up uh, an easy win in the end, Shruti. What would you say about the Australian players? Well, in the game, uh, the spinners came to the fore as was expected uh, off that wicket after what we saw in the first match between uh, West Indies and South Africa, with Lyon picking picking up uh, the man of the match award too. But I absolutely love the way David Warner batted uh, on a surface uh, everyone else has struggled, and I'm talking about two matches in a row now. Warner made an unbeaten 55 ball 55 that included some really aggressive running between the wickets. Uh, it was a treat to watch a batsman in any kind of flow on that pitch, and um, I'm expecting something similar from Warner yet again uh, come this game against South Africa. Uh, Shruti, do the cards through any surprises, or will Australia get through this uh, quite easily too? You know, Sunir, if only things were so black and white. In fact, Australia's cards would have looked almost perfect had there not been for a couple of issues coming through. The glaring one for me will be their initial batting. Their first 10-15 overs of their innings could be a tough battle. So it will be important for them to weather this mini storm and build up from there. Their bowling is pretty much on the money and it would be unfair to fault it too much because they should get the required results. Now just one other thing, there could be this small phase towards the latter end of the game where Australia could lose their rhythm. They should regain this, but some weaknesses could be exposed during that time and then could be used in the matches ahead by their oppositions. So uh, South Africa had an intense opener. How will they fare in this game? The last time I had spoken about the criticism that South Africa have faced in recent times uh, for their poor showing across formats. Uh, Their defeat at the hands of West Indies in this tri-series opener would have only added to to those uh, woes. Uh, There's this tweet I read on uh, a South African fan's uh, handle uh, after the after the match, uh, which said that uh, there was a time when South Africa used to win a lot of meaningless matches uh, and then lost the main one, you know, losing a final or losing a knockout game in a World Cup. Uh, now they have stopped winning altogether. <laughs> <laughs> it it was yeah, it was a tad harsh, but that's what you expect uh, from fans, and that's what you expect when you're. Uh, you know, you go down to a West Indian side with a shone of so many stars, which is struggling in their own right. Um, at 160 for three in the 36th over in that game, uh, you would have expected South Africa to get to at least 250. But the batting against Sunil Narayan uh, reminded me of how OC's batsmen played in test matches in the subcontinent in the 1990s. They were absolutely clueless. And so was South Africa in this opener. Uh, South Africa were absolutely clueless. That was their problem. And which players will work best on this low-scoring pitch? Well, uh, Riley Russo is uh, coming off a hard-fought half-century. And on that kind of surface, it's uh, less of the flamboyance of A.B. De Villiers and more of the same from Russo that might do the trick. Um, And I'm not saying that uh, De Villiers can't bat uh, in the manner that uh, Russo batted. We have seen how he does in uh, in Test cricket as well. So he will have to channelize that internal... uh, Russo, if uh, if he wants to uh, get going as well, he, he definitely cannot uh, expect a Bangalore-like uh, pitch uh, out there in uh, Guyana. Uh, Imran Tahir and uh, Aaron Fangiso uh, will need to uh, do a lot of bowling again. And I would be really interested in seeing how De Villiers handles uh, those spinners against a more aggressive Aussie lineup. And I'm talking about more aggressive as compared to what the West Indian top order was in the previous match. Uh, moving on to the cards, uh, Shruti, uh, do they reveal... Uh, Anything uh, different for uh, South Africa or uh, would uh, Australian cards be better than those for South Africa? 
You know what? I was thinking the same thing when I did pull out their cards. I was happy to see the sort of effort and fight back they should manage to make. They won't take any onslaught lying down, but their cards don't show the sort of confidence required to make life difficult enough for the Aussies. Their batsmen should play the middle overs quite well, but it's the beginning and end that may not be so attractive. The bowlers should start well and may even manage to give their team some momentum, but they will need to up their focus towards the end. Now, Sunir, which team will you go with? Uh, look, I know Australia came away uh, strongly in that first game opposed to, as opposed to South Africa who crumbled away in a heap. Uh, but these are early days in the tournament yet. Uh, Australia obviously will start uh, favourites for me. But uh, I think South Africa have the tenacity to run them very close. Uh, i just like to add one point here. And this uh, might not be uh, related to this match alone. You know, Australia and South Africa have been involved in three ties in ODI cricket, uh, which is the same number that Australia and West Indies uh, have also been involved in. If not in this game, uh, who knows? We might see one tied encounter in this series as well. What about the cards, Shruti? This is going to be a game where two teams will really put their heart and soul into it. But it's tough to ignore that one team's cards do seem more superior. So it's tarot advantage, Australia. Well, I think what you just said is what I also thought that it would be a close run match. I think uh, Australia could come out on top. But that's all we have for today. We'll be back with some more international cricket apart from uh, the Natus T20 Blast and uh, the Caribbean Premier League uh, towards the end of the month. But all that for later, don't miss out. Uh, Do subscribe as Shruti just said. Uh, Bye-bye for now.